The Hudson River shorelines, it's where we interact with the river itself. It's where we go to fish, it's where we go to recreate, it's where our industry takes place. We need to have shorelines that can be adaptable to not only changing sea levels, but changing flooding and storm patterns. While we might technically be able to engineer our way out of things like climate change, we definitely can't afford to. We're starting to understand that there are different ways to protect our shorelines. We call them natural and nature-based features or sustainable shorelines. My name is Dan Miller. I'm the Habitat Restoration Coordinator for the Hudson River Estuary Program. So what you're looking at over there is, is typical rocky shoreline of at least the central region of the Hudson. Steep slopes, bedrock that comes right up from the shoreline. We're fairly close to the edge right now and we're still in over 30 feet of water, so it, it's an indication of how steep it is underwater. There's a great diversity of shorelines in the Hudson, natural shorelines and man-made shorelines. Each have their own contributions to not only the way we live and interact with the river, but also to the health of the river itself. The message I think that's really important is that all of these shorelines have a role. One might be in production of small fish, other shorelines are for people, and they all have their place. It's very, very important for us to maintain uh, shallow sloping areas such as intertidal marsh and shallow water vegetated habitats. If you have just nothing but vertical shorelines, those habitats just get squeezed out of existence. When we talk about sustainable shorelines, we talk about mimicking nature. How can we bring plants into the mix to thrive under changing climate conditions? How's the, how are the sections going? My name is Pippa Brashear. I'm a landscape architect and urban planner at Scape Landscape Architecture. New York City has a real wide diversity of shorelines, but all of our shorelines are constructed. We have a history of about 150 years of modifying our shorelines in order to facilitate shipping and construction and other commercial ventures. Companies like SCAPE are replicating nature to create new forms of shorelines. These sustainable shorelines can be more affordable to construct and maintain, and more adaptable over the long term. What happens when you build a bulkhead is you turn what should be a wide intertidal environment into a thin line, and so we're always looking for ways to open that up. Where hard shorelines like seawalls and bulkheads crack and deteriorate over time, natural features can actually become stronger as root systems become established. So now we're starting to look to nature and green solutions. It turns out that plants are actually the real epitome of resilience. All around the world, people are rethinking shorelines and testing innovative solutions that use nature to help us adapt to climate risks. The Living Breakwaters Project proposes building a system of breakwaters offshore. We hope that they will mimic the oyster reefs that once really covered that shoreline, not only as coastal protection infrastructure, but also to create habitat. This shoreline itself is a location that is owned by one of the nonprofits in the valley, Scenic Hudson, and they have done a soft shoreline, sustainable shoreline. A house was removed, a bulkhead was removed, and they put in a sloping vegetated shoreline, which has been very stable through a number of the large storm events that we've had. In addition to reducing risks, sustainable shorelines provide many co-benefits, like cleaning our air and water, sequestering carbon, and providing habitat. Shorelines are dynamic places, and they play an enormous role in the health of the river, and then, by extension, you know, our own health. The future for sustainable shorelines is very exciting. I think that there will be new types of shorelines and new ways that we live with the coast, because there has to be.
Climate Smart Communities is a certification program that provides guidance and funding support for local municipalities. Using natural, sustainable shoreline protection is just one action that communities can take to adapt to climate change.